What a time to be alive. Well, howdy doody dangly folks. Hope you're well, uh, it's Barry here. Today we are doing another 4-3-2-1 video. Four, three ingredient recipes to try one time, like the Fuji's, one time in your life, or hopefully uh, more than that. You guys love this playlist as much as I do, so after the end of this video, uh, if you're not inspired to go cooking, check out the others. Some of you guys that are a little bit intimidated to get in the kitchen, try some of this just to get you going, add a few little flavors and spices and things like that, and it will blow your mind. Uh, we're doing some stuffed peppers, honey mustard chicken, uh, a mint chocolate hot chocolate, hot chocolate, and also a chocolate orange uh, fondue. Peppers. If you get a slightly unlevel one, take the smallest slither flush down like that, see? So you're not actually cutting into the pepper, but it should give you, see? Nice level pepper. You can keep the stalk on if you want. It looks kind of like aesthetically pleasing to some people. Um, we are gonna take off the top. You could sort of keep that as a lid at the end. I quite like to leave mine open. And you see, it's kind of like a cobweb or a flower. You want to take out these links, okay? This sort of nest of seeds here. <laughs> it's quite a funny looking flower. That will just pop out. And trust me, if you touch these with your bare hands like I am right now, please make sure once you do all your peppers that you wash your hands with soap. If you need to go to the toilet afterwards and forget to do that, that can hurt. And don't rub it in your eyes or anything like that. That was a bad example of the toilet one, but just wash your hands. But you're kind of left with a nice little pocket of pepper. And if you give it a little wash, you can get out the little seeds hiding there. Just like that. So there we go. I'm going to do that with my other uh, three peppers down there. And remember to wash your hands afterwards. And whilst that's happening, my oven is preheating. Nice. All right. So hopefully you can see here, I've got these uh, little baking dishes here. They're kind of cute. And I, what I like is that they're compact and they're gonna hold the peppers kind of upright because they can sometimes wobble as you soften them up, okay? And you can see that I have kept two uh, with the lids on. If you do want to keep the lids on, you can see it's a little bit of the stalk there. You need to cut a little lower, okay? So I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. The dishes are ready. My oven, there it is, boom. So they're gonna go in for about 20 to 25 minutes just to soften up. The peppers need some filling, so grab yourself a frying pan, and if you want to do veggie on this, you can completely overload it with a whole packet of veg mix. Well, in fact, something like this that I'm gonna use. This is a pack of frozen stir-fry vegetables, so that's got like a whole medley of uh, vegetables in there. In fact, it actually does have peppers in it, so there's gonna be some pepper inception. But I just love the idea. It's got onions in there as well, loads of stuff that we can wilt down and pack it. So I'm gonna cook that along with some beef mince. But if you're vegetarian, as I say, maybe corn mince, whatever. And if you can, remember I'm sticking to the three ingredients. Bit of cheese, especially at the end. Oh, seasoning, herbs, I'm not doing that. You do it, it'll taste better than mine. Remember, I try and keep it as basic as I can and don't use oil normally. You really should, but there should be enough fat in this anyway. You know, season it, salt and pepper right now. So this is just some beef mince, we're going to brown that first of all. Now what a lot of people do is tend to just brown mince and that's it. But if you really wanted to, you could fry this down in its own fat that's given off there and you can sort of start to caramelise it and char it, which will drive in even more flavour. I'm not going to do that, but you can. Instead, I'm going to shove in my stir fry mix. So what have we got there? We've got some carrots, peppers, broccoli, sweet corn, red onion. Yeah, this is good. If I could do it, I'd be chucking a load of herbs in here now. Boom, now that one there, every five minutes I'm gonna stir it through to soften it up, warm it through, and that'll go in our peppers. Ouch! Okay. Okay, so I've just got these out of the oven and my uh, mince veggie medley has just finished frying. So um, it's quite interesting, the green one, I don't know what's happened to the red, it's blistered way more quickly. So I'm not gonna put that in with it, but it will look pretty cool as a lid on top. But you can see the droopiness of that, it has all softened up, but still enough to hold the filling. Just like a dentist, we're gonna fill it. I really, really wanna season this. And I mentioned on a previous video how I don't feel like those are ingredients, but that's fine, you guys should do it. Yes. So I'll leave these lids out, they will go back in the oven, but before we put them back in the oven, which is the temperature still at the same, it's just still sat there in the background, nice and warm. Uh, we are gonna do another savory option. This is super easy. Over here is a, a baking tray, a high ridged baking tray uh, for reference uh, with some chicken thighs in it. Now, these are ones with the skin on, teeny bit more naughtier, but I like that crispiness it gives. We're gonna make some honey mustard chicken. 
So to make honey mustard chicken, you just need <laughs> honey, mustard and chicken. We've already got the chicken. So use any mustard you want. I'm using whole grain. It's just, I like the texture of it and I like, you know, sort of the chunky bits of the mustard pieces in it like that, the seeds, I love that. Don't have to, you can use a smooth mustard if you want. And you want to kind of get about an equal amount of honey to mustard ratio, but of course you can adapt that. And we talked about caramelizing the mints a moment ago. This is kind of like what the sugar in the honey will do. So we can just mix this together. Oh yeah. And if you feel, you know, that's kind of like a nice texture. It's spreadable, but still thick and glossy and sticky. But if you want it a little runnier, just add a bit more honey. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's potent. Well, that is, that is it. Just brush the tops initially in the honey mustard, look at this. And as it cooks, it will sort of dribble off. So we will need to baste it a couple of times during baking, but that is all you need to do, it's so simple. Now the only downside to this when I was in the supermarket, I was racking my brains. Like these are our two savory options, so the stuffed peppers and the chicken today. Um, you would just serve like rice or something alongside this, okay? I was gonna just grab a packet of like microwave rice or something, but it's up to you. I mean, you might wanna have the stuffed peppers alongside it. So that's them all fairly coated. You can do the bottoms if you want, but as I say, a lot of it will run off as it cooks. But what you do wanna do is the rest of that marinade, just get it in the pan, use it. Because as it cooks, as I say, it'll warm up, it'll get more maneuverable and we can start to like baste it more and more. So that, along with our peppers, can go in the oven again. Same temperature too, same time, cha-ching. There we go, they all fit in there nice and snug. So I'm gonna give them half an hour, but as I say, this is at the front so we can baste it. Maybe do it every 10 minutes, so about three times during baking. Bye. All right, uh, so here we go. We've got a three ingredient uh, minty hot chocolate coming up. This is a one liter that I nearly stuck my finger in of uh, full fat milk, use semi-skim, whatever. Use, use oat milk, use coconut milk, whatever you want. Uh, this is a, a vanilla pod, very, very nice. The stench. And he stuck, he stuck that one nose. It's incredible. A little bit more expensive than just using some vanilla extract, uh, which of course you can just add a teaspoon instead, but it's the seeds that are so good in there. Oosh. And this is some dark chocolate. This is minty dark chocolate. So mint dark chocolate, but you could use orange dark chocolate, which we're using for the next thing in a bit. It's just a way of getting an extra bit of flavor in there. And all I'm gonna do is make a slit down the middle in it with a knife. Just score it down there. Sometimes what you can do is run along there and push all the seeds out, but they should just come out naturally as we cook it. The chocolate, this is a really complicated step. Have a little bit of extra chocolate to one side. Don't eat it off camera uh, in case you want to make it stronger and thicker. If you want it thinner, more milk. So we're going to place the vanilla pod, quite a bendy little thing, straight in there. See? Did you see the little speckles of pods already come out? Well, no, it's the seeds of the pod. But just before we get it going, it's been 10 minutes for our chicken. Oh, wow. Oh, you see that? That smells so good. So I wouldn't really move it around too much. I'll just lift it up from the middle of the pan and just gloss it again. Ah, oh. and that's it. Drum roll, please. Okay, uh, yeah. I've told you this before, because it's hot milk over a pan, don't get too relaxed about it. Keep it moving, it will scorch your pan otherwise. So, temperature's pretty cold right now. Don't forget the chocolate is in there. The pod's in there, there's the pod. iPod, no, copyright. The chocolate's gonna start to break down and that is gonna be gorgeous. Do just keep this moving because you don't wanna scorch the pan and ruin this moment because it is minty heaven. And that, ladies and gents, is what happens when someone rings you up uh, for a car insurance quote and you're like, yeah, I've got a little bit of time. Uh, you really do need to keep your eye on that. That did froth up an absolute dream. So I'm gonna have to clean that up, let it cool down a little bit. Yeah. Whoops, sorry about that. Anyhow, do you wanna see the world's easiest fondue? Sure you, fondue. Uh, this is some chocolate, okay? Again, very similar to the hot chocolate we're making there, except we're not gonna let it spill over. We're not gonna answer the phone to insurance quotes. No. <laughs> this is good quality dark chocolate. In fact, it's an orange flavored one. And what I like about it is it's actually got bits of candy peel in it. I think it was made by Lint. I think it's called Orange Essence or something. Very nice. But because it's a fondue, we're gonna be dunking marshmallows in it. I wanted 
like a little bit of chunk in it. So to have like little bits of candied orange as well. Ah, oh. and we're gonna make it in the microwave. And really it's just two ingredients, chocolate, with orange extract of your choice, flavorings and all that stuff, and cream. About 140 mils of that, which is the equivalent of just over a quarter of a pint, okay? My other jug's got, I should use that one from the gadget video. Darn it. Just stick all of this chocolate in with that cream. I'm going to stir this around. I'm enjoying this way too much than I should be. That's really, really fun. And this is going in the I have no idea how long for, but it won't take too long. Every 20 to 30 seconds, I'm going to take it out and give it a stir. Like this. First 30 seconds, not much is going to happen. If you wanted to do this over the saucepan, warm the cream up, get it really hot, and then pour it over the chocolate, which you might want to grate to speed it up. In fact, I should have done that with this. I'm just trying to make it really easy. But I'll keep doing that. I won't answer the phone to insurance quotes, and we should have a nice sticky fondue. Basically a ganache. I'm getting a lot of um, book publishers approaching me at the moment saying, Barry, if you were to do a cookbook, what would it be on at the moment? And part of me feels strongly, really, I feel very passionate and strong about this, that a three ingredient book might be quite interesting. Um, or the history of kitchen gadgets. Or waking giant food world records with Jiminy James. I don't know, if any of those stand out and you like the sound of it, let me know. Oh, baby. And if you can just see in the top shot there, We've got some marshmallows and some bamboo skewers just waiting to hang out there. So believe it or not, now that we've got it smooth other than those pieces of orange candy bits, we do want to let this cool a little bit so I can bring the rest of it together. I've put the hot chocolate mix into a jug for easy pouring. This vanilla pod is still in there, but just to make it a little bit smoother, through a sieve. Oh my gosh. Hot chocolate candied ganache. Fondue, wink, emoji. Oh, <laughs> yes, look, the candied orange chunks at the top. Fondue. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that colour. Oh. oh, and the peppers as well. They've got a little charred, blistered edge on there. Put it back in there. Bake it with some cheese on top. Mm. And if you want, uh, you can stick your lids <laughs> on top of those. Wow. <laughs> what a tapas! It's only half past ten in the morning, I've done that already. That's took me an hour and a half to make four recipes. Boom. Does that sound cool? Boom. Sorry. Alright, so there is a stuffed pepper. Uh, we're trying to be like one of those Instagram videos and just slice right there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, it's just falling apart now. But it's worked. And then a chicken thigh, look at this. I'm just gonna take a little piece off the side like that. Oh my gosh. So let's try some of that stuffed pepper and drop some on the floor. Oh, it's so tender. I went for the yellow pepper, that, that sweetness is growing through it. It definitely does need some seasoning. I know some of you guys don't mind me doing that. Season it, some more flavor, but all the medley of vegetables in there as well. There's, I'm just getting sweetness and meatiness, but flavor, Gorgeous. Speaking of flavour, honey mustard chicken. Oh wow. Yeah. That is like worlds apart. The sweetness and tanginess, the softness, the crispiness of the chicken. Mmm. Yeah, a little bit of rice and broccoli with that would be phenomenal. The hot chocolate. Oh yes. What does that taste? That tastes like a chocolate bar, like a minty chocolate bar, like an arrow. Oh wow. Oh, it's so smooth. I think it's a bit naughty. We don't normally have full fat milk here in this house, but I rammed it in there. You're getting a real subtle hint of vanilla, but the, the real punch is from that mint. And of course, if you just use plain chocolate and add a little bit of mint extract, you'll get a bit more control. Well, that is gorgeous. There's a bit of vanilla coming through now, and that works well. Last but not least, I've got a bamboo skewer marshmallow. <laughs> chocolate orange. Mmm. What a time to be alive. That is phenomenal. It's just easy. It works an absolute charm. That is sensational. And there's so many ways you can mix it up. Put fruit around the side if you want, rather than marshmallows. Really? 
But that is it. Don't forget to have a barathon now. Check out the rest of the 4321 playlist. Uh, tag anyone that you know that is new to cooking that would find these videos interesting or just give them the motivation to get in the kitchen. And don't forget to follow me on social media everywhere, Mr. Barry Lewis, uh, for things. Uh, and uh, that, 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 that's it. So uh, check it out. I've actually had an idea while I was doing this video of doing a Christmas 4321. So I might do that next. I don't know. I don't know. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three.